Pompeii and Herculaneum are ancient Roman cities that existed on the western coast of what we now know as Italy. Pompeii was founded in the late 6th century or early 7th century BC by the Asians. It was later conquered by the Roman Empire in 80 BC and remained a Roman colony until its demise caused by the volcanic eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD. Herculaneum was originally founded by the Samnite tribe in 6th century BC, but was soon taken over and used by the Greeks as a trading post. The Semnite again regained control until its Roman overthrow by the famous general Titus Didius. In 89 BC, Herculaneum suffered a similar fate to Pompeii at the foot of Mount Vesuvius, but luckily, due to pyroclastic flow, the once wealthy in life Herculaneum is just as wealthy in historic artifacts after life, preserved in 50 to 60 feet of volcanic ash. Because most school studies focus on the scholarly Latin language contained in the writings of Romans such as Caesar, Polybius, Horace, and Tacitus, it is easy to forget the majority of the ordinary Roman people spoke a more colloquial Latin language. These people cursed in Latin, they talked about sports in Latin, they even vandalized in Latin. Most of this ancient Latin graffiti has been preserved on the walls and ruins of Pompeii and Herculaneum in quite good condition because of the nature of their destruction. And once you decipher the puzzle of the written Latin language, you'll find that Roman graffiti was not unlike a lot of the graffiti we see today in the sense of vulgarity and content. Perhaps one of the most entertaining descriptions of this describes an image found at a bar in Pompeii where the image of a man and a semi-naked woman are making love while balancing on a tightrope. As if this isn't already difficult enough to do while sober, both characters are drinking large glasses of wine. Ancient graffiti artists did not limit their work to just written language, but examples of very explicit and vulgar imagery can be found throughout both cities. Some common themes Romans liked to explore in their graffiti art were things like dogs, donkeys, and horses, but they possibly liked the phallus the most. Amongst graffiti of the sexual nature, it is a relief to find that the old Romantic Romans did rise above the pornography in the eternal search for love. Over 2,000 years later, their hands still reach out to touch our hearts. There's also confessions of friendship. And of sexuality. And even some helpful advice. Pompeii and Herculaneum were not without high-minded thinkers either. Other writings on the walls include everyday lists and notes. And even political propaganda. The interesting thing about this political graffiti is that it appears that wealthy owners of the walls controlled who got to write on them, which was helpful for the wealthy who used the wall writings to get votes in political debates. Most of the messages were simple, the name of the politician and what they were running for. They focused on the business district. Around 1,000 ratings have been found. 40 or so have been found along pretentious house walls and oftentimes had deserves an office or 
good man accompanying the name and office of the individual who was running for it. So what does this mean? Graffiti is basically a rough, condensed version of what people are thinking in that civilization at one time. This would suggest that the people of Pompeii and Herculaneum were people just like us, although slightly more obsessed with fecal matter. But in any case, the fact that the ancient Roman peoples were writing on public walls about these sorts of things instead of being focused on a crooked political system or war suggests that things were relatively okay and peaceful in their society before the eruption of Mount Vesuvius that ended these civilizations on August 24, 79 AD.